If you're a freelancer or you run an agency, I'd love for you to think like, where do you get the majority of your clients from? Like when I ask this to my friends who run agencies or freelancers or peers or students, Chris, guess what they say? Word of mouth. Word of mouth. But it's funny because marketers will make us think, well, that's a dangerous way to run your business, right? Because then you're depending on other people spreading the word. And so they teach you all these marketing strategies and they tell you like, no, you need to be on Instagram and maybe run some Facebook ads and you go along and maybe you read a book, you know, like Expert Secrets, which I've read and I started to implement all the things and your head is spinning with ideas and you put like your creator hat on and you start creating all this content and putting it out there. But then sometimes what happens is you hear nothing. And so you're feeling really frustrated and you're wondering like, what next? What did I do wrong? Like, why didn't, like I followed these strategies that I learned, like why aren't I getting clients? We spent a lot of money paying an agency to set up a funnel for us. I think it was like 30 grand. And then we spent three grand on ads and we got zero. Oh no. Not to say that this is going to happen to everyone. If we looked at the data, we saw that like most of our clients were just referring us through word of mouth, you know? And, and if, if you think back to like when we re renovated our house. I didn't go on Google and search for architects or builders. I just asked like my closest network or people who I knew had just renovated their house, like, who did you hire? Did you have a good experience? And um, I also love this statistic, like 91 percent of all B2B buyers are influenced by word of mouth. And so what we decided to do is, well, let's turn word of mouth into a strategy. And if we think about it, like a referral is the key to the door to the of resistance. Like I love this quote. That's what we started to double down on. Like when we saw like, where do our clients come from? Oh, they always come from our other clients. How can we turn this into an actual marketing strategy so that we keep having leads coming in even when I'm away for four months? <laughs> and so one of the things that I say a lot and I stand by and I, I believe that this has contributed to the success of our agency is that the more people know about who you are, what you do and for whom, the more likely it is that they're going to you know, spread the word and bring in word of mouth referrals. And so my philosophy is to always be planting seeds and watering them. But if you're wondering, how do we do that? One of the, the things that I did with my operations manager is we sat down and we made three lists. And you can do this in your own time. The first one is leads that inquired in the past, but never became clients. And we just, you know, started jotting them down. It helped that we had a sales pipeline in place because then we could just like pull all of those contacts. And we had like a list of 900 people. Like I was shocked. I was like 900. But over like six years, we had like 900 leads of people who were like, hey, how much for a brand identity? Or I'd love to work with you. And then, you know, at some point the conversation dropped off. So that's the first list we did. The second list was we listed our dream clients, like the best of the best. And the third one was other potential referral partners, other people that were sending work our way were like copywriters, photographers, Facebook ad strategists, SEO agencies who had worked with our clients. So for this first column, we sent out this magic email that was coined, I think, by um, Dean Jackson. It's the nine word email. And it's basically, hey, name of the client, are you still interested in you know, brand identity? And that's it. The second email that we started sending is the dream client email. That is something like thinking of you or loved working with you. That's what you would include in the subject. And hey client, I was recently updating my portfolio and came across the work we did together. I wanted to thank you once more for trusting me with your project. It was by far the most, and then you can insert, you know, what you felt was true about it. And it was an absolute pleasure to collaborate with you on it. I've been reflecting on my business plans for the future and honestly, I would love more clients who are like you. And so it got me wondering, you wouldn't happen to know just one person, someone who just like you would benefit from. And then you could say something like tripling your website conversions like we did for you. This sentence I learned from Phil Jones and he breaks it down. And so why it works so well is that the first part of the sentence, you're challenging them. You're saying, well, you wouldn't happen to know, which I think what, what it does in our brain is like, well, try me. Like, let me see if I can solve this one. Then you're saying just one person. 
So you're making the ask feel reasonable. And when you say someone just like you, you're flattering them because it's like, we want to work with someone just like you. Like if only we, all our clients were like you. And then you're reminding them of the benefit you gave them. The third one is connecting with potential referral partners. I call this the big fish strategy. I did this with Selena Sue. I don't know if you've heard of her. She's a publicity expert. And at the time, she had a lot of clients that were like, oh, if only I knew those people. Like, she seems like she knows a lot. She might be a dream client to have or like just a really good person to know because she's not at the level where, where she's unreachable, but she's at a level where she knows a lot of people. I joined her newsletter and in her welcome email, she invites you to reply. So I took that to start a conversation. You know, I started asking about the training she was doing, things like that, which got us into a deeper conversation. She asked like, what, what's your business model? How much do you charge? I told her like the fees this is back in 2014 and she starts giving feedback you know of what she thinks she starts talking about how she helped Marie Forleo and Danielle Laporte free of charge and so I thought okay well that's a good idea let me suggest the same so I was like well you know if you ever need anything I would never charge you she ended up saying like oh well there's a chance I might take you up on it I have someone working on sales page for me but I don't have super high expectations for the first draft. And so I ended up doing a sales page for free for her. I pulled an all-nighter. This was my first year of freelancing. And that like helped deepen our relationship. She started spreading the work, the word about me and what I did. But then what I think really helped then take this to a whole other level was that she posted on Facebook that she needed an assistant to help her set up an event. She was doing a two year business anniversary party and a mastermind. And so I put my hand up and I was like, I would love to volunteer. What ended up happening is we were spending like a lot of time in her apartment. I was seeing a lot of the behind the scenes. And by the end of the trip, what was really, I think career changing for me was that she invited me to her two year business anniversary party as a guest instead of her assistant. So she's introducing me and you might or might not recognize some people in the in this photo, you know, like Jim Quick, he's the brain trainer of like Richard Branson and Will Smith and there's Lewis House in the back and they became clients like after I met them at this party. What I realized was a strategy is like connect with a big fish and then suddenly you might elevate your whole network.